Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening, sir. I, w I was missing you there, Angel. Long weekend. Yeah, yeah, so sorry. I no. apologize because I'm missing the, this class. I, no. will, I, will, I was sick. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. How, how's everybody going? How's everybody doing? Long weekend. How was your long weekend? Welcome to week two. Bienvenidos. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, everybody. How are you guys? Everybody connecting this moment. <laughs> everybody's connecting, everybody's yeah. All right, all right. We're gonna give we're gonna give everybody a couple more minutes. Hello, good evening. Started. Hello, good evening. Okay. Hi Alex. Hey, how are you? Jeff? How's it going? Fine, How's fine. It going? Well, and now it's going to say, okay, fine. <laughs> hello, hello. Let me see what we do. Where are we here? Hi, Richard. How you doing? Good evening. Hello, hello, and good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Good evening, teacher. Hello, hello. I have a question, teacher. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Talk to me. Uh, the I don't, I don't know if you resolved the 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 problem or the this in the section three, the first um, section the first three quiz text uh, is um has some problem. I have some problem of course. Was it can, three point four? Yeah, section. Yeah. The, was the first uh, the first quiz? Uh, okay, hold on. Let me let me get that right quick. Or oh, you have to listen a conversation. Uh, it's a conversation. Oh, that, yeah, it's a. Uh, Somebody just let me show you. Let me put my share, my screen on share. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah, okay. So, yes. module two and then section three. And sure. then there's a vocabulary, relative clauses, knowledge check, 3.4? Yeah. Okay, let's check it out, let's check it out. Oh, no, listen, exercise, the carnival, the carnival. Oh, the Brazil, is that the Brazilian yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Hold on, so, so is this the one? Yeah. It says, how much do you know about these days and months? Read the sentence and complete them by choosing the best information. No, it's the... Uh, um, says, New Year's Day is a day when... New Year's Day 
people sometimes they say no, 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 no. People express their love to someone. Uh, no, it has one. No, it's the first one. The first one. is before before the dark. Before this one. Yeah. All right, let me go back to the previous. Relative clause. No, but I've been thinking so. Mm -hmm. Maybe, hold on, let's see. I remember seeing that the Brazil is a carnival. I think, yeah. I, I, let me see, let me see which one is it. Oh, 3.6. No, it's 3.6. 3.6, I'm sorry. Yeah, 3.6 and then, more than, so what's another trick for this one? Let's see, let's check this one out. Listening exercise, carnaval time. Right. So do you guys know where the carnival comes from? Yes, that one. Well, now we know, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So they say, listen to the audio and answer the following questions. El audio es el que te está dando el problema. You couldn't hear it. No, no the answer, you know. I, I put uh, just a party. <laughs> and I think you got to be a full, full, full answer, right? Well, it, it, it is a party. I, it is. Yeah, you have to say it is a party. So this one, this yeah, one, I think yeah. I, I had already done it. What is a carnival, right? What is a carnival? It is a party. A party. Yeah. How long does it last? Four days. Right, right, right. When is it? It's on late February or, or early, early, early March. March. Uh, what is samba? A dance that my teacher likes to do. All right, thank a you. Dance. I got it. All right, Samba. so so yeah. check check to see. You know, sometimes what happens is that you might be putting it's a party, but you don't put the dot. Yeah. And I think this one is one of those that if you don't put the dot, look. So you still put it. It is a party, but now it's wrong yeah. because the dot is not there. So it could be I, little things like that. So, um, I don't think it accepts either if you put it's, let me see, it's a party. Now, technically it's, it's okay. Technically it's good mm -hmm. because this would be, you know, it's the shorter way of saying it. It's a party. You can say it like that, but here um, they don't accept it like that. So you would have to put the whole long term it is a party dot and then do the submission i hope that helped yeah thanks all right cool nice to hear nice to hear and so who remembers the last thing we saw on thursday i think it got a little bit complicated towards the end but I don't remember if it was that complicated. <laughs> um, I want to talk to you guys. We were talking about gerunds, and I think I don't, I don't remember 100% whether whether it was in this class. They said, "Well, if we're using the you know a tense like a present continuous, can we use a gerund?" And so my answer was yes and no. And I think that's where we, we might have gotten a little bit, well, I think I got a little bit maybe over complicated with the explanation. So um, we were talking about gerunds and I believe that was the last thing we talked about. Yeah. And that's when the word came out because we were adding ing to the words thinking, playing, painting, and eating. And so what I wanted to clear up was, you know, the rules on why, even though technically speaking, it's a gerund, why it doesn't, or we don't mention it as a gerund when we are discussing it. And the thing is that for a gerund, to be classified as a gerund, it has to be doing uh, a specific job, you know? 
And so let me show you guys the list of the jobs for the giant. Where is it? I had it here somewhere. Uh, come on. There it is. I think there's the one. <clears throat> so the way the rule works out is that, yes, this is a gyro, right? It's running. In its bare form, um, it could be, for example, a uh, participle, which is something that you guys saw here, right? You, see, you guys see here loving. So if you guys are using the word loving or taking, for example, and it's a present, uh, a present form, it actually starts off as being a verb, a simple verb, and then you're adding the ing, and it's called verbing. You know, people say that it's verbing. And then there is the participle version of it, and then there's the gerund version of it. So when do we use what? Um, when you are using the verbs to be, the form verb to be, when you guys are using the words I am and using a word like working. In this particular case, I am working right now. I am working. Because you are using the form present continuous, el formato que estás, que estás usando, the form that you're using, and because you're using it with the I am, in this particular way, that gerund is not considered a gerund. It is just considered a verb with the ing, verbing or verbing, right? The form of verbing. But if you guys notice, it's because you guys are using the I am with the present continuous. And so what you're trying to do is you're turning the word work and you're setting it up in a tense of present continuous. So you need to turn that word from work to working. And you absolutely need that ing if you guys are using it in this format. But it is not considered a gerund, uh, a gerund because you are not using it in these ways. Now, if you're using a word, let, let's use the example of running, and you're using the word running and you're using it as the subject of a verb, then it is considered a gerund. If you're using it as an object of a verb, that is considered a gerund. If you're using it as an object of a preposition, that is considered a gerund. And if you're using it as a subject complement, that is also considered a gerund. So this is one of these examples that I was telling you about where there's a rule that exists, but depending on the sentence structure and how you're using it, that rule might change and it becomes something else. So it goes from the very simple verbing and it turns into a gerund. And if you keep using it that way, depending on what type of, you know, what type of um, gerund that you're trying to use or how you're using it, it could, it could easily become a participle. And so with the participles, there are two. There are present and there are past. And so, how do you use you how do you usually use these well this is one one of those examples let me see where i where can i get one here it is so you can use this one and in this particular sentence it is considered a participle and not a verbing because it is part of a continuous form of a verb. And so you notice that the words that are being used are, he is reading a book. And then here, it is not considered a verbing. It is not considered a gerund. 
In this particular case, it is considered a present participle. And so what does that have to do with us and what we were covering? Well, we were covering the, I believe we were in gerunds and identifying when it is a gerund and when it is not considered a gerund. And so then you get the idea of the word and then you get the examples of when a gerund is being used and how it is used in a sentence and what placement does it have on that sentence. And I think that was the last thing that we talked about. So if you guys uh, were not too clear on when to use it, right? Please keep in mind you have to think about how is it that you're using the word? What tense are you trying to use? Are you using pre present continuous? Are you using past? Um, are you using future? So keep this in mind for a little bit. Um, then we moved on and we started working on the actual de definitions and give you some examples of the words. And that's pretty much where we left off. Uh, we did the live worksheets. And yeah, so here, here's where we were talking about it. So the verb to be, the word work, and how we turned it into present continuous, which was by adding the ing, and it was working. So I am working today. All right. Hopefully that helped everybody. Y vamos a pasar aquí. This was the example that I had for you guys. There's a couple of other ways that you guys can see it and it's still considered, you know, verbing. Um, I am writing a book. She is listening to the radio. They are doing their homework. I'm writing. She's listening. They're doing. So these are forms to be. I, she, they. And we incorporated the reading portion. Uh, we read a really long story last time. I promised you guys that this one was gonna be short. So here it is. All right, so ladies and gents, compañeros. Verbing, gerunds, and participles, right? These are the verbs with the ing, but used differently in sentences, phrases, and of course, your speech. So, ojo con esto, ojo con esto. Vamos a iniciar our day with our reading exercise. This one is really short, so I'm only going to give you guys a couple of minutes, one or two minutes. You guys get to read, and then I ask you the questions. Remember? Are you guys ready for that? Yes. yes All right. Teacher. So, here we go. Yeah, really. Starting the two minutes now. Go ahead. Read away, everybody. can see uh, 
Put on my glasses. <clears throat> Two minutes are coming up, everybody. Yeah. Are everybody good? Yeah. All right. Short, right? Short lesson. Here, let me see what happens. Oh my God, where is it? Did I lose the fox? Oh, good Lord. Oh no. Sorry guys. Let me go ahead and I missed place. I misplaced okay. the little quiz. You guys got it? Sorry about that. I was I think I, I actually blocked you guys. All right. Hold on, let me see. Oops, what happened? What is it? The fox? Uh, no. The fox. Fox in the grave. Here it is. Uh, All right. Did you guys finish reading? Everybody read. Everybody read it. Okay. Uh, More or less. All right. I can see. I'm sorry. I'm, well. I'm sorry about that. I keep. I keep. I keep. Se lo, se lo volví a poner. Except now it has the questions, right? Can you see them okay right now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. <clears throat> and let me know when you guys are done. It's too. It's too small. I can too see. Too small. It. Too small. Hold on. <laughs> let me try. Let me try making it. Let's see. Let's see. How about now? It's okay. Nice. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Sorry about that. Better be. See, it's he's too small. Well, uh, too small, too small. <laughs> you can you can maximize the the window, please. Let me see. Let me see if it works. Let's see. What happens is that my computer automatically. Uh, it's right. It's right. Let's see. Make it bigger. Make it. Let's make it bigger. How about yeah, now. It's great. It's great. It's small. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let me know. Let me know as soon as you guys are done. <laughs> much better, much better. <laughs> I'm happy, happy okay. to hear that. Okay. Let's answer the the questions. All right, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait. Nice. All right. All right, everybody. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go with the questions. <laughs> So here's, here's a question, right? Question number one. The hungry fox went to the vineyard. What is a vineyard? Letter B. Letter B. Letter B. All right. Letter yeah, B. you guys got it. All right, you guys got it. Okay. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. So we had letter B right there. Next question. The grapes looked plump and juicy, dried up, or sour and large? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. 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 All right, plump and juicy, plump and juicy. The fox did not eat the grapes because they were sour, they were no good, or they were too far up for him to reach. Letter C. Letter C. Letter C. All right. Yeah. 
When the fox could not get any grapes, he turned away in disgust. Disgust means happiness, worry, or anger. Anger. See? Anger. He was anger, right? In change. The fox then said that the grapes were too far away, too green and sour, too big and juicy. B. B. B it is, sir. Got it. Got it. The fox would not eat them if someone gave him some. They were sour or he didn't have any. No, it's little B. Little A. A. <laughs> All right, letter A. Seven, the fox despises the grapes. What does despise mean? Like very much, say they are terrible, choose them. Letter B. B. A. Oh, I got one and one. I have one, <laughs> one for A, one for B. Letter C. Let us see. I have one. For, oh I, have, I, ha, I have three. It's a tie for three. I mean, I need one more person to kind of just vouch. A, B, or C? A. Oh, I heard an A, so that's two. Let's try it. Oh, my God. No. So who Yo, said? Somebody, somebody said, oh, let us see. I mean, B. B. No. Let her be. That's correct. Ah. What does obtain mean? Disgust, get, or despise? Letter B. Get. A. Get. Get. Letter B. I heard a couple of Bs. Okay. Oh, 87. We still passed. We still passed. That was a good reading. That was a good reading. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, let me go ahead and go back down to this one. Let's talk about... Let me see here. Move this one here a little bit. Did I? I think I closed everything. I don't know. No, here it is. Okay. Here it is. And let's see. You guys, some of you guys were already in section three, but we as a class were in section two. And we were about. Well, we covered infinitive and, ger and gerunds, and we were coming up on pronunciation, which was really short. If you guys did the lesson for pronunciation, it was so short that you don't even know that it was there, right? Really short. And then it starts off with a conversation about, can I borrow your cell phone? And then it jumps into imperatives and infinitives. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to, con we're gonna try to cover both of those since everything else is a knowledge check, lesson objective, and a reading exercise that you have to follow on, on, uh, on a video before we get to section number three, which we start practicing some vocabulary words. All right, so let's get out of this one. Get out of here. Let's see. Where is it, man? I love these. Here it is. All right. That's our reading exercise. And then we start off with this, syllables and the stress. So what they ask you to do on the video is to stress. Oh. You have to stress the different Syllables. But now, how do I know which syllable to stress if I don't even know how many syllables are there in a word? So the first thing that we're going to look at is how to identify the syllables first. Once you identify the syllables, then we're going to work on which one do I stress. Is everybody okay so far with that? Alguna pregunta before we get started. Have you guys seen this before? Have you guys practiced this before? Okay. Kind of okay. All right. Excellent. So please remember the English language is about sounds. Every word, the yeah. sentence, whenever you guys are saying something, 
and you guys are putting together a phrase or a sentence, you have to think about the rhyme. You have to think about the music. You have to think about how the sentence is said. How does it sound when you guys are actually saying it? So with that in mind, there are two types of stresses. There is a sentence stress and there is a word stress. In a sentence stress, there are certain words, the whole word gets pronounced a little, a, a little bit more than the other. Do you guys remember the exercise with I love you? Yes. All right. That exercise was about sentence stress or word stress. The whole word gets stressed. I love you, right? So that you can provide the meaning of what that sentence is saying. This one here focuses on the word because that is also part of what you have to do on a sentence. And so syllables, what is a syllable? A syllable is a sound and you either have vowel sounds or you have consonant sounds. And a vowel sound is the A, the E, the I, the O, and the U. El famoso A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. And sometimes, depending on the word, the Y is also considered a vowel. Is everybody okay with that? A vowel sound, it starts with an A, an E, an I, an O, and a U. Ahora, no se vayan a confundir. Solo porque está una vocal al comienzo de la palabra, no siempre tiene el sonido de la vocal. Ojo con esto. All right? Think about the sound, don't think about the letter. Is everybody okay so far? Is that clear to everybody? Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. So the letter Y is a vowel, but only if it creates a sound reminiscent of an A, E, I, O, or U. For example, try, try, cry, try. and dry. Try. Correct. Right. Now, in all, in, in, or when you're counting syllables, you are not listening to the consonants. You are only listening to the sounds of the vowels. All right? Okay. All right. So, let's practice a little bit, okay? You guys don't have to turn on your mics. But if you want to, you can. And so we're going to practice saying words with one and two syllables so that you guys can hear them. Now, the most common are two syllable words, okay? And then from time to time, you will see one syllable word. Okay. Here we go. Cheese. Queso. Cheese. Mm -hmm. Cheese. Cheese. How many sounds did you guys hear? Cheese. One. One. Correct. Cheese. One syllable. Now. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to listen to this one. Chicken. 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 How many chicken. sounds do you hear? Chick two. N. The, there, yeah. The two. two, right? Chick and N. Chick and N. Chicken. There's two separate sounds. Chick N. Chicken. 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 Okay. 
How about this one? Dog. 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 Two. How many sounds do you guys hear? One. 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 Dog. Okay. Next one. Export. 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 How many syllables do you hear? How many sounds do you hear? Two. Two. Okay. All right. Next one. Cat. Cat. Just have one. One. There we go, right? Okay. So, so here's the deal. How many syllables? So, the most common is two syllable words. That is what you guys are going to see every day. But from time to time, you get things like cheese, and you get things like dog, and you get things like cat from time to time. Very specific, right? In the majority of the cases, you get two syllable words. Okay? So, here we go. In this particular case, we have some examples. I did one which was export, export, press and present, present, export, chai na, table, table, present, export, chai na, table. Everybody okay so far? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next. Present. Well, this one here is still present. Press and present. Slender. 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 Clever. Clever. Happy. P. Happy. Present. Present. Slender. Clever. Happy. Vamos a cambiar un poco. Present. Present. Export. Decide. Decide. Begin. Begin. So, begin. Y crece. Begin. Decide. Decide. Export. Behind. Present. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Talk to me. Yeah, it's another word behind. Uh, this one here is begin. Comenzar. Iniciar. Begin. Yeah, okay, begin. Okay. All right, so what are the rules or what is the rule? Okay, the first thing is identifying how many syllables. Is it one or is it two? If it's one syllable, there's no need to stress. No stressing. Cheese is cheese. No importa como lo digas. Cheese is cheese. Traeme el cheese, traeme el cheese, traeme el cheese, traeme el cheese. It doesn't matter how you say it. Cheese is cheese. Lo mismo con dog. Uh -huh. Ah, cheese. <laughs> bring the, bring the ah, cheese. <laughs> Correct. So, one syllable words, you don't have to worry about the stress. Two syllable words, yes, you have to start to worry. Three, four, five, six, seven syllables. You have to worry a lot. When we get to, seven, to the seven syllable words, we're going to work on it a little bit more because those are a little bit more complex. So, now that you have identified two syllables here, you have to identify what is it talking about? What word? What is this word? If that word is a noun, ¿qué dijimos que era una noun? Do you guys remember? What is a noun? It is una cosa. Un sustantivo. Yeah, there we go. All right, all right. So 
So in this particular case, I'm giving the person something. I'm giving them a present. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's a present, right? We know that for a fact. And so if it is a noun, once again, if it is a noun, you guys are going to stress the first syllable. In this case, press. Y luego vas a bajar el volumen de un solo in the second syllable, end. So it says press end. Press end. ¿Estamos bien hasta ahí? If it is a noun, yes. we are going to stress the first syllable. ¿Estamos bien hasta acá? Okay. Okay. If you guys are using an adjective, you know, that guy is ugly. Well, no, ugly is one word, right? What can we say? Handsome? Yeah, handsome. The teacher is very handsome. So if you guys use that adjective, when you guys use an adjective, also put the stress in the first syllable. So if you guys are using handsome, the first stress would go in hand. And then you would lose the volume in some. Handsome. Y baja volume. Everybody okay so far? Everybody good here? Okay. Yes, sir. So teacher. Okay, okay. Okay. So, teacher, when do we do the second syllable? When do we put the second syllable? When it is a verb. When it is a verb, then you stress the second syllable. Le baja volumen en pre y le subís en cent para que diga present. Bajo, pre, cent. Present. I am going to present today. I am going to present la maqueta. I am going to, I don't even know, how, what do you call a maqueta in English? Does anybody know? La maqueta? Model. The model, okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll accept that. The model, I like that. I am going to present my model today. Okay. Entonces va la pregunta. En ¿Qué ocasión le voy a poner el estrés yo a la palabra en la primera sílaba? ¿Qué necesita tener o qué necesita hacer para que yo le ponga el estrés en la primera sílaba? It has to be a noun. Or adjective. Or an adjective. That is correct. So, if I put the stress on the second syllable, what does it have to be? To be a, verb. a verb. All right. Verb. All right. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's it. You just have to remember the word that I'm gonna that I'm that I'm about to say. Is it a noun? Is it an adjective? Or is it a verb? But teacher. Yes, ma'am. What happens if we have three syllables? Oh, verbs? oh, that gets a little bit complicated. Let me tell you why. Um, the more syllables you have, the stress structure changes a little bit or the pattern. Let me show you, let me see if I have it here. If I don't have it here, I can get it for you guys tomorrow so that you guys can see it. Okay, so when you have three, four, five, six, seven, what changes is the meaning itself. What are you trying to say? Or what is the meaning of the word that you're trying to say? Um, I want to use one, medication. That one, how many sounds did you hear? Medication. How many sounds did you hear? Medication. Four. Yeah, so that's, that's a four syllable, right? And so now, 
when when that comes in you have to use pretty much everything that you have at your disposal the sentence um, what is the sentence trying to say? What are you talking about? And there's a very specific rule for three, four, five, six, and seven um, syllable words. Uh, I can't, I, you know what? I have one for you guys. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I want to be able to show it to you guys. So I'm going to add it here. Uh, I'm going to put more then two syllables rules and i'm going to get it for you guys tomorrow and i'm going to cover it real quick at the very beginning so that we can so that we can use it all right so let me go back to this one real quick because i don't think i i didn't think i have it here this one here focused on the one syllable and two syllable because it's the most common okay and so in the future we were going to cover the longer ones uh, but since you guys brought it up, we're going to cover it tomorrow real quick. Okay, so teacher, well, I can't do that, man. I can't. I don't know when I have to put, you know, the little stress. Well, it, it's very easy if you really think about it, right? You have to remember the noun. If you guys hear the word project, project. Project. How many how many syllables do you hear? Project or project? Either one. How many how many sounds do you guys hear? Two. Two. Two, right? Okay. So what are you trying to say? If your sentence says that you will present the project to your boss. Okay. Look at how the sentence is formulated. You are going to present the project to your boss. What are you going to do? So the verb project doesn't fit into the sentence. Ahora, let's understand the words. Let's talk about vocabulary for a little bit since you guys are going to see it in the future anyways. What is project and what is project what is the project. meaning project yes sir what is what is project and you can give it's me like, go ahead, go like ahead. Uh, <clears throat> something you have to do uh, is this like a building something or create something uh -huh. okay hey uh, i am an architect and i have a project yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. En español, ¿cómo se diría project? Un proyecto. Un proyecto. Okay. All right. I'll accept that. Un proyecto. Tengo un proyecto. Usted es mi proyecto. Tengo un proyecto. All right. Okay. So now we're going to change it up a little bit. What is project? What is the meaning of project? Thinking in the future. You are. It's project is like a uh, uh, growing, growing, growing with uh, in your job. Okay, okay, okay. It's simple. All right. In español, ¿cómo se diría project? Proyectarse, imaginarse o como que Proyectarse, se. Proyectarse, imaginarse. Okay. So, usted compró un proyector, right? <laughs> ¿Para qué sirven uh -huh. esos proyectores? Proyectar. Para proyectar, right? Proyectar you're you're going to project, yeah. You're going to project a picture onto the wall. Okay. So, I want you guys to think of it this way. If you are going to present your project, your boss, ¿qué es lo que vas a hacer? I am going to project the project and show you the, uh, all the ideas. Okay, more than likely in a PowerPoint presentation, como lo estoy haciendo yo. 
Yeah. I, I am projecting yeah. a PowerPoint presentation. Okay. So I'm going to tell my boss or I'm going to give my boss an update for the project he assigned to me last week. ¿Qué es lo que voy a hacer? Le va a enseñar el proyecto que hizo la semana pasada. Le voy a dar, correcto. Lo que él me asignó en este momento yo se lo voy a volver a brindar y le voy a dar el, 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 el update. Entonces, de eso se trata. Si tú ocupas estas palabras, right? Depending on your sentence, that word can either be a, a noun or it can be a verb. And so if it's a noun, you have to put the stress where? ¿A dónde va el stress? The first. In the first. In the, in the first syllable. Yeah. Okay. What if it, goes, it goes, it goes. if it is if it is a verb, where does the stress go? First in the second syllable. In the second syllable. Okay. So now how e how easy or how hard is it? Bueno, let's try it with a simple word. La banana. Nosotros, ¿cómo le decimos? No, bueno, el guineo va. Pero para la versión americanizada, ¿cómo decimos? Banana. 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 But banana. if you talk to somebody from the United States, ellos no dicen banana. ¿Cómo dicen ellos? Ba banana. <laughs> There we go, banana. <laughs> hey, can I get a banana? <laughs> y vos le decís, ¿qué, man? ¿Qué? Banana. <laughs> Pasame una banana. ¿Por qué? Porque hay la syllable number two. So, la pregunta que me dijo, la pregunta que me, que, que me estaba mencionando, this banana, banana, is a three, it's a three, Syllable word, three syllable word, but the stress goes in the second syllable. Second, second, banana, banana, banana. All right. So tomorrow, remember what I'm going to do tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you the rules on why the second syllable stress when it's a three or a four syllable. Okay, so far, ladies and gentlemen, let's practice some of this vocabulary. <clears throat> I want you to think of the words, the letters that are in bold. Project. Object. Project. Project. Con convict. convict. Present. Present. Suspect. Suspect. Record. Record. Contrast. Insult. Conflict. One more time. Project. Object. Conflict. Project. Present. Suspect. Object. Present. Record. Suspect. Contrast. Contrast. Insult. Insult. Conflict. Conflict. And now the verbs. Project. Project. Object. Object. Convict. 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 Present. 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 Suspect. 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 Record. 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 Contrast. Contrast. No, no, no. Contrast. No, you said it. You said it. You said it wrong. You said it wrong. It has to start contrast. Uh, contrast. There we go. There we go. Insult. Contract. Insult. Conflict. Conflict. Mm -hmm. Conflict. Okay. Conflict. Ahora, we said the exact same words, but they sounded different. And they also yeah. mean something different. Así es que ojo yeah. con estas reglas. Ojo, ojo con esta. Yeah, yeah. All right. Here's I had a decision. Yeah, you're correct. Okay, so remember, we're going to go back to this one tomorrow, and we're also going to practice a little bit on this one, but we're going to leave it for tomorrow, because today I wanted to talk to you guys briefly about infinitives and imperatives. Infinitives, ya los habíamos cubierto. 
infinitives were words like to be, to arrive, and to prepare. What we had not covered was imperatives. Esta sección, este módulo, se va a enfocar en putting together imperatives with infinitives. So you're using both infinitives. of them. Estás ocupando imperatives y estás ocupando infinitives. Okay? So, infinitives and imperatives. So what is an imperative? An imperative or imperatives are sentences stressed to get someone to perform an action. They are also called directives, commands, or requests. Let me give you an example. I'm going to give you examples of command. Take that chewing gum out of your mouth. Take that chewing gum out of your mouth. Stand up straight. Give me the details. What are some examples of directives? Open your book. These are examples of imperatives. How do we use them? Okay, well, you can give them, you can use them to give orders. You can give instructions. You can use them on signs. You can use them to give warning. You can use them to make an invitation or to give advice. Give me some examples. Come here at once. Take that gum out of your mouth. Take one pill every 12 hours. Open your books on page 33. Push, pull, give away. Stay on your right. Don't sit on the bench. It's wet paint. Don't smoke. It's bad for your health. Have some tea. It's still hot. Come in and sit down. We are having tea. Go home and get some sleep. You look exhausted. Tell me about your trip to Ireland. Okay. So these are examples of imperatives. Now, how do we use them? Well, we have the function. If you want to direct, order, or command. And the example is, wake up now. Wake up now. You can use them as a warning or a prohibition. Watch out, don't touch me. You can, do, you can use these to give advice. Don't be panicked. Don't eat too much. You can use them for giving instructions. Go straight ahead, then turn left. Take the pill after the meal. Imperative to use a given request. Please don't go. Please reconsider. Let me alone or leave me alone. Please. Okay. One more time. What is an imperative? Or what's another word for an imperative? Sentences that express? Stay away is, is, is to be a bad Okay. They provide commands. They have requests. Or they can give directives. Yes. All right. What are some of okay. the imperatives that you guys can hear? Well, come here at once. Come in, sit down. Ooh, nah. Even though it sounds warm and nice, <laughs> it might not be the warmest. Go home and get some sleep. You look exhausted. Y claro, están las defini the, the, the definitions are a little bit clearer. Okay. Okay. All right. So. Perfect. We were able to go into imperatives. We touched up on the infinitives that are to be. And then we did a little bit of practice. I had a practice for you guys, but I think this one we're gonna do, we're gonna do it on, we're gonna do it tomorrow. We're gonna finish it tomorrow. And all you have to do 
is turn these words into imperative verbs, okay? So I want you guys to keep that in mm -hmm. mind. And I will have the two syllable rules, well, the more than two syllable rules for you guys, and that way we can look them up. Um, going back a little bit, please remember that we are on section two and that we have completed section two. Okay, right. Tomorrow, when we review the syllables, we're gonna be done. And then we're gonna transfer over to section number three. And we're gonna start, we're gonna start touching up on vocabulary and on relative clauses of time. So hopefully we get to that tomorrow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, do you guys have any questions for me? No, sir, no, it's clear. Everybody good? Okay, yes. that's it, okay. that's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a good night. See you guys tomorrow. Have a nice, sir. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. See you tomorrow.